still are, have problem with MA. MA is as important or more important than RA. RA is a reaction, MA is a reaction here. You have also here, I don't know what I call their B. So you have a B also RB and MB, that's four unknown and therefore you have two extra unknown here, not one extra unknown. It was in your homework, previous homework in singularity method and in superposition method, I have given you this problem, which was a fixed support at both end. And then there are lots of funny things that some of you are going to do, and my guess is many of you understand the whole scenario correctly. You make occasional error, you, put, you lose one or two or three points. But there are some also students which make static error, which is not supposed to be at this level, so I explain as we go along. So first of all, you start writing your EI. First of all, this is the differential equation. So you write EI dx d to y over dx squared equal to m as a function of x. Any function can be given to you. However, we have discussed that. You have RA and you have MA at the beginning. You should start from there. Now, psi. Many of you in this class, especially not the other class, you have difficulty with this sign. Everybody sees the moment of that one is negative. They put a negative here. That, I do not buy it. That is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. We are not talking about the static moment. We are talking about the internal moment, the reaction of the beam to the action. Everything that you learn in ME218 for the, I don't know, this is the 10th time I'm repeating there. Some of you are paying attention. This is only for benefit of those that still have a little problem with ME218. Everything that we did in ME218, when you write M, sigma equal to MC over I, that M is not external moment. It is internal moment. Everybody understand that, that you have to go to the body. I don't care what you have here. You have, may have R here, M here, load here, etc. You go to that section. There is only one N. There is only one shear. And there is only one moment. Everybody understand what I'm saying? That defined all your stresses. Is that correct or not? Therefore, we are talking about this M, not that M. Is that correct? Therefore, if this goes this way, this must be going that way. Yes or no? Because to balance it. Therefore, this system is a positive system or negative system? Negative. Negatives. Or else, you can do it like that, which I have done it many, many times. The action is negative. The reaction will be how many times have you seen me doing that? This has not apparently registered for some people. At least about 10 or 15 people put the, this wrong. So it is RA. Why is positive? The action is negative. The reaction is the reaction of the beam to that is a positive. So this becomes RA x minus 0 to the power of 1. 1 because the moment is linear. Is that correct or not? With the same reasoning. MA is going positive, the reaction to it is negative, if you draw it that way. Some of you draw it on the other direction, so that gives you a positive mode, everybody, but that's okay. If you draw it that way, this should be minus MA. If you draw it opposite to that, then it should be plus. Everybody understand it, yes? This system, action and reaction, this is negative. We talk about it many times. This action... And that reaction, now this is, this is this blue one, this is inside the beam. Is that correct or not? Yes? Anyhow, I think that everybody by now should recognize that, but I saw that and that was surprising. X minus 0 to the power of 0. Then nothing else happening until at 1, which is a load, constant load. Shear is linear. Moment is a parabola. Then you put... Again, the action is, look at the action. If I put a load here, the action is positive. The reaction of beam to it is negative. So minus 12, x minus 1 to the power, because that's 1 meter start, to the power of 2 over 2. Is that correct or not? Yes? 
since this goes all the way, yeah, this is what I don't mind. If you miss that one, you miss probably six point or five point or six point or seven point. I don't know, because you cannot miss that. I gave you uh, 10, 12 homework. Six of them has this in it. Is that, how can you miss that? Is that correct or not? Then what? Then this goes all the way to the end. Then I have, this is because when I wrote here, goes all the way to the end. Is that correct or not? Then I have to subtract this much of it, which is plus 12, x minus what? Where does it start? x minus 3 to the power of 2 over 2. Is that correct or not? That is your moment equation for entire beam, correct? Then the rest is automatic. I do not care how you do that because this is very simple. Then you said EI dy by dx or theta equal to RA, x minus 0 to the power of 2 over 2 minus m x minus 0. By the way, you can drop the 0 because 0 has no effect on your quantity. So minus 12. But here you cannot. But these are not parentheses. These are, this is another cardinal mistake that few of you make in this class. These are not parentheses. These are bracket. Bracket has a special format, which we discuss in class with you guys. x minus 3 to the power of 3 over 6. Plus, if you miss that one, then the whole system collapses. So that's why I don't understand how you did your homework, some of you, because this was very much simpler than your homework. R a x minus 0 to the power of 3 over 6 minus m a x minus 0 to the power of 2 over 2 minus 12 x minus 2 to the power of 4 over 24 plus 12 x minus 3 to the power of 4 over 24 plus C1x plus C2. Now here come another point which is very interesting. Many of you have seen in the homework that I did on the class on the board, many times I put C1 and C2 equal to 0. Is that always the case? Of course not. This is the reason for it. And that reason are these two. Is that correct or not? Since I have a moment there, therefore that means it's not rotating. It's like that. Therefore, at x equal to 0, theta equal to 0, or you can say theta a equal to, because this is point a. Theta has point a equal to 0. Therefore, that gives you 0, 0. This is, uh, some of you calculate that, minus 1 to the power of 3. I warn you about I mean, If you do that, you haven't heard anything about the singularity method. Everybody understand that. So this is negative. Therefore, negative must be equal to? Zero, this is negative zero, therefore C1 become yeah. equal to zero. And similarly, at x equal to zero, y equal to zero, but fortunately, many of you knew what you are doing. This is zero, this is zero. Again, this is negative, therefore zero. This is negative, therefore zero. This is zero, C2 equal to zero. And that is, that's now what my objection comes to your studying system. You use this. And you get C1 and C2 equal to 0. Yes or no? What, what is this? No, what is that? Is it a fixed support? If, if you understand what you did at A, you should do it for B as well. Yes or no? One third of class don't know what to do with it. Why? Probably they see me doing this. They have a recipe in mind. Everybody understand what I'm saying That They follow, okay, he did that, there was a fixed support, he put C1 equal to 0, C1 put C1 equal to 0, C2 equal to 0. If that's the case and you understood it, there is no doubt that you should use it for B as well. Yes or no? Because at B also, because that's a fixed support. Yes or no? At B also, theta equal to 0 and y equal to? Zero. Some of you, y equal to zero. Some of you have, didn't use it at all. You thought you can solve it with that one. So far, we got rid of C1 and C2. But don't forget that we have four more unknown left and two equations of equilibrium. Two equations of equilibrium is Ra plus Rb equal to the load or sigma Ma or sigma Mb equal to zero. Yes or no? I need two more equations. Where are that coming from? From two other boundary condition and two other boundary condition. This is the key actually equation. Those two are, was in some of your homework as well. Don't you have an RB here which prevent this from going up and down? Yes or no? Don't you have here an MB there which prevent this from the 
rotation. That is the key to this problem. Then these are the one I'm looking for. This is the one you get. This, you get the point. This, you don't. And this here, which many of you miss. At x equal to 5, theta equal to? Zero. zero which gives me the following equation. You go there and put x equal to 5, so you get this equation. Anyhow, Ra, 5 to the power of 2 over 2 minus Ma times 5 minus 2, 5 minus 1 become 4 to the power of 3 minus 2, 5 minus 3 become 2 to the power of 3, and you s simplify that equal to 0 or you get the way I have it here, you had a different way, 12 and a half RA, or 25 RA if you wish, minus, let's do it this way, 25 RA minus 10 MA equal to 224. So that's equation one, or any version of that is correct. Then next equation I need, actually I don't need to use any equilibrium equation. This was simpler than what you thought. So at x equal to 5 meter, also y equal to? Zero. zero. Then I use this equation. This becomes two equations for? Two unknowns. So therefore I go there. So I put this second equation. Let's make it short anyway. The second equation I give you the answer. When you put this one into the last equation, again, this becomes 5, 5, 4, and 2. And so you simplify that one. That becomes 125 RA minus 75 MA become equal to 720. Or some of you divide that by 6 or whatever. That's OK, too. Usually, I try to make it round number because it's easier. Is that correct or not? Never divide by 6 or 3 because you get all decimal point. Is that correct or not? As you see, all I have to do, multiply this by 5. Is that correct or not? And then subtract these two together. This becomes 50, and then subtract it. Then 75 minus become minus 2. It becomes really simple. So if you calculate that, MA become equal to 16 kilonewton meter, and RA become equal to 15.4 kilonewton. And then in order to calculate RB and MB, what should I do? I should use the equation of equilibrium. Everybody understand that, yes or no? The, and the funny part is about 10 people in class, when I ask you to calculate reaction, you write RA and RB, but you didn't write MA and MB. And I said, please have some respect for M, because M is as important as RA. Still, this is the funny part, still, all of, that, all of the static, still people do not recognize the moment reaction as part of a deal. And that's why some of you have a little bit of problem of a static there. Is that correct or not? The moments are there, the moment of the reaction. Anyhow, you write sigma R, when Ra is actually equal to 15.4 and the total load is 24, so the balance of it goes to Rb. Is that correct or not? Yes? So anyhow, Rb become equal to... 8.6, and then you take moment about here, you have to take MA into account, MB into account, so MB also become equal 11, I suppose, 11 kilonewton meter. So that problem that resolved that way. Anyhow, still some, anybody have not got there? Joshua, anyhow, Cesar Marino, Cesar? Okay, Nick, Nick good? Yeah, okay. Josh, fam? Josh? No? Nick? Okay. Josh, fam. Gary? Okay. And Brian Russ? They're missing. Anyhow, let's continue with the discussion. We have lots of work to do because we have to finish this, this, this chapter. We are about one class behind. Remember, go back to the, your note, please. Everybody put those aside. Go back to your, your note. Look at the state of strain that I gave you. Please put this aside, everybody. Go to the previous page in your note, because I ran out of time. That's why I have to repeat, and I don't want to repeat. Look, look at epsilon x. Where was epsilon x? When I started the, the practice drawing the Mohr circle or a strain, what was epsilon x? Epsilon x was? What was epsilon y? 110. What was gamma? 180. 180. Now, remember, in the stress, we draw a a square or a cubic and we show the sigma but in a strain are not like that this is representation of a strain 
This is original. You see, this is what I said there. Result of, look at it. I said there, result of what? Strain transformation of class exercise. That's what we did. Yes or no? Last time. What was the strain started with? Uh, this one. Look at this one. How much is that? Plus three forty. See, this length, which was one, after a strain become one, three forty micro, which is one point oh 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 three four. Everybody understand what I'm saying? That yes. What is this? What's epsilon y? 110, if it was one unit, because epsilon is the amount of deformation per one unit of length, yes or no? So one become one plus epsilon, yes or no? So that is 110. What is this angle in change of this angle? Because this was originally 90 degree, now it's 90 minus gamma, which is the positive scenario I gave it to you last time, which is how much? 180, yes or no? This is original state of, don't come and show me like that. I have seen people look like that. They put here something like this. And they put here epsilon x as if this is sigma. This is not sigma. Everybody understand that. This is change in the length. Is that correct or not? You can guess it looks like that, but you cannot put it like that. However, this I would not ask you to do many times, but I want you to realize this is what's going on. Is that correct or not? Yes? So there. then what did we get for? What did we get for the principal strain? Go back again. What did we get for principal strain? Come on, guys. Take a look. Well, how much epsilon A and epsilon B was? Look at this one. Look at how many degree. Remember how many degree we did we have? What was theta P equal to? 19 degree. Yes or no? You forgot. <laughs> theta P was? Look at this. Theta P was? 19 degrees, so we shifted it. This it was positive counterclockwise, so we went from x 19 because 2 theta p was 38 degree. It is in your note, so we went up 19 degree, and this is one principal strain, and this is one. There is no change in angular. So what was epsilon a? Epsilon was a positive 370s. It means it is expansion. Yes or no? Yes. And epsilon y was what? Epsilon b, epsilon maximum, and epsilon minimum. Epsilon minimum was 80, yes or no? If it is minus, then you make it smaller, yes or no? Because minus means compression, plus means tension. This is the state of a stress, principal stress, preposterous strain, I'm sorry, yes or no? What do you think this is? This is maximum gamma, in plain gamma. Because I have to add to this either 45 degree up or 45 degree from here down. Is that correct or not? Which we takes it here, 64 degree. Look at it. Epsilon average. Look at your uh, epsilon average was 20, 225 for both X and Y. Everybody following me? And then gamma was how much? Gamma max was in plane was 200. 25. So this is original state of a strain. This is principal strain. This is maximum. And what is this? You can read it exactly. What is that that I didn't do, but I asked you to do? You see, it was a question, but I ran out of time. What was that? 30 degrees. Rotation of 30. 30 degree here, which on the more circle, you have to go 60 degree. You take your X and Y wherever it is, you go 60 degree. We have done that in the past, so I don't have to do it. Is that correct or not? Yes? So this is what we do. This is the presentation. I do not usually ask you to do it, but it's good for you to understand it because this is essential for you to see how this works because some of your homework at least gives you some idea. If you cannot plot it, that's okay. I do not expect you to do it. However, this is the format of it. Is that correct or not? Yes? Now, how do we, now, we got to the point now, I want to leave it at that, and I will, will go to what we are really doing. Here is the following. So let's go back a few pages, go to the second page of the handout. The first page is the outline. We already talked about it. Let's go back here. You see, this is what we are doing in general. We talk about, this is ME218. We talk about the strain, then gammas, then plane the stress, which is more circular, stress transformation, which was chapter five. Now we are here, we are doing exactly the same, but this time we are doing with the strain. Is that correct or not? 
Now what is happening is the following. Go to the next page. Here we go. These are really, this is a chart. This is my chart, so you can use it any way you want to. It's not in, I haven't seen it in any book. However, you can design this. Call it design process. So put it here, design, put here, design process. Of course, you cannot write it if it is in your computer. <laughs> I have an extra copy there. You can take it. Oh, you can write it? OK, good. OK, this is what we did in ME 218. We went, we went through the, all the chapter. We were able to calculate sigma x, sigma y, and tau x, y. Yes or no? At the end of ME 218, we were calculating sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y, due to the bending, due to the torsion, etc., etc. This is the dead design process. Then we don't stop there. What did we do in last chapter in ME 218? We put it through the more circuit to end up with what? Sigma maximum, sigma mac minimum, principal stre stresses, and principal maximum shear stress. Absolute. I didn't put absolute here because that means we have to draw three circles. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. We went through that as well. Then, of course, if I need, if I need the ep epsilon, what's this? I have to cut. If I need the epsilon, I can use the Hooke's law. Remember Hooke's law? What the Hooke's law was? Everybody remember Hooke's law? I put it, put it on the board last time. Epsilon x was equal to what? Sigma x over e minus nu sigma y over e. We don't have sigma z. Is that correct or not? Yes? You want to write it again? Go ahead, write this. Sigma y equal to minus nu sigma x over e plus sigma y over e. Generally, when we don't have sigma uh, z, this is what will be epsilon x, epsilon y. Of course, we have epsilon c or epsilon z and that is minus nu sigma x over e minus nu sigma y over e everybody knows that so if you are taking a plate and pulling it and pulling it the thickness become much smaller because of the two negative negative or if you pushing it pushing it, the thickness become larger that's the handout that's the if you want to practice that this is me 218 handout so you can Take a look there, but you don't, I'm sure you know that, or you must know that. So that's it. Then we have th three equations. Gamma xy equal to what? Equal to tau xy divided by modulus of rigidity and also the other two that because these are the major parts, so I'm putting here. So the Hooke's relation as it, it refers here to this one, this is the Hooke's law. You can add sigma z to it if you want to, but if it is three-dimensional, there are sigma z over e sigma z that comes from the third term. And the other two gamma, but usually this is them. Now, this is, but remember, there is always a relationship between sigma and epsilon, yes or no? So if I have all the sigma, I can calculate all the epsilon, but if I have all the epsilon, I can calculate all the sigma. There's no problem there. I'm sitting in my office, I can calculate that. But the point here, in the design process, we go from here to here. Is that correct or not? Then we make a model of that. Is that correct or not? And we measure the strain this time. But this time, we end up with what? Epsilon, x, y, and gamma x, y through the measurement. And then we repeat the same process. Of course, everything should match. Is that correct or not? If the two match together, then our design is valid design, or it is good design. Otherwise, I have to go modify my design to see what I missed, or use a different method, or something is wrong. Is that correct or not? So that design is no longer good, because I'm not, my, some of my assumption is not good, maybe. Or I'm missing something there. Everybody understand that. So the pr pr process are parallel. As you see that, the design process is exactly the same. It needs more circle. It is always through this Hooke's law, which is, in, see, I can go back and forth. And that's, I have this, I can find this. I have this, I, that's no problem there. But it's two parallel process to each other, yes or no? Now, the next question is, how do we measure epsilon? So this is what I want to do. This is, again, now new material. So how do we come up? If I want to start from here, from here, I need to have, we call it gauges. Now, the gauges are shown in this page. So let's go back again. This is a gauge, the picture of a gauge. This is it. 
This is the picture of the gauge. Everybody see that? The gauge is lots of wire here. See how long this wire is? And everybody and goes at the end here. Some of you have taken the lab. You know what I'll, I'll talk about. Everybody knows from physics classes that when there are wires there and the length of the wire changes, the resistance changes. Yes or no? So these gauges have lots of wire. And this is a very tiny wire there. So they are, when you put it, stick it on the top of material and load it, the length become either longer or shorter. So the wire, so that measures, in a way, measure the strain for you. You see, you don't have to know it. They have calibrated ahead of time for you. It connected to the machine. The machine gives you the epsilon. Is that correct or not? So those are the gauges. Are electrical wire. You connect that to the system, and you wrote the epsilon. The only problem is this, that if you want to write it down, please, this is the lecture today, because you have to use this constantly in all your next set of homework. You have to use that. I don't think I need that anymore for time being. So let's put this one off for time being, see whether we need it later on. So because we need the board. Now let's say this is the, your instrument and then you manage to put one strain gauge here, which is in the X direction and manage one strain gauge here with the Y direction. So the A gauge and B gauge give you epsilon X and Epsilon Y. So I need to start with, I need Epsilon X, I need Epsilon Y, and I need Gamma X Y. Is that correct? In order to start my process of strain gauge process, I need Epsilon X. Okay, I have Epsilon X. I need Epsilon Y. I read Epsilon Y. But how about Gamma? Gamma was, as I showed you earlier, that was the reason I showed those pictures to you. Gamma is not change in the length. Gamma is in change in the format of the shape, shape of the uh, of this. So I cannot measure that. Is that correct or not? How do we do that? You see, how do we do that through the process that I gave you? Instead of measuring gamma, which is impossible to measure, we do that. We put another gauge here, let's say at 45 degree, which we call it First of all, we need three gauges. In order to come up with epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma x, y, obviously we need three gauges, not one. Is that correct or not? One gives me epsilon x, one gives me epsilon, hopefully this one gives me gamma. Let's see how it works. Is that correct or not? Yes? So they come, usually they come in three, and we call it rosette. So when there are three gauges together, we call it rosette. So please. We have 45 degree rosette, we have 60 degree rosette, which we call it delta. We have some other kind of rosette, or we can have put it an arbitrary location. I'll explain that to you in a minute. Is that correct? But if we buy this and install it on my system, so I have X, I have Y, and I have epsilon at 45 degree. But what was the equation you wrote last time? You remember the general equation that you should, all of you remember? Epsilon X prime was equal to what? This is the key equation, guys. We started, we started the lecture a week ago with this one. Was Epsilon X cosine square theta. You remember that? Plus Epsilon Y time sorry, plus gamma is not two. A two gamma over two, but we don't need the two and two. That was for the purpose of matching it with the stress. Is that correct to use the same idea? <laughs> But gamma x, y, sine theta, and you know, I add the two and you subtract the two to make it look like a stress, a stress, plain stress. That's all I did. Yes. Is that correct or not? But this was the equation that came up from the process. So let's use it for gamma. So here you say epsilon at 45 degree because that one is you are measuring. Yes or no? X prime, your X prime is at 45 degree equal to epsilon x cosine of how much? Cosine of 45, which is the square root of 2 over 2 square, plus epsilon y square root of 2 over 2 square, plus gamma xy square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 over 2. Those are sine and cosine of 45. As you see, this ends up to be 1 half. This ends up to be 1 half. Of course, this two ends up to be one half. Therefore, from here, I can calculate gamma xy. Gamma xy, which is here, this two and this two, two goes there, become two epsilon 45 minus, because these are going to the other side, minus epsilon x plus epsilon y. So through this equation, 
or through your choice. You have two choices. Either use directly this, or if you see that, that's the result of the seventh one. But this is for only 45 degree. If I have a delta rosette, which is 60 degree, I cannot use that for that. Is that correct or not? Yes? Because the 45 degree by, by, by anyhow, by, by uh, the way we discuss it here, is the most common rosette that you can buy. This is the most anybody uses that. Is that correct or not? To come up with the epsilon x, epsilon y, and epsilon. gamma x. However, you don't have to do that. If by any chance you cannot do that, as I said, the next one is the 60 degree rosette, which is, looks something like that. So x, so it looks like something like that. But then I will explain to you what happened there in a minute. So you don't have to worry about it, those sort of detail of it. But let's say that you don't, cannot put your gauges in any particular direction. If I put my first gauge, as theta one angle, theta one angle could be 25 degree, 35 degree, whatever. I put a gauge at theta one. I put another gauge at angle of theta two. This is gauge A, this is gauge B. And I put another one, I, I don't have even to put it that way. I put that one, even gauge C at that direction. But remember, this angle is theta, it's like a static. So this is not theta three. That angle, always, you always measure it from the positive x. Remember the static problem that we always measure, because the, remember, the sign will change if you use the other one. So theta 1, remember, in general, that's why on the, on the graph I also said theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3 on, the, on the, the, those chart that I gave you. So if this is the case, you see I have a still three gauges, but I have a, the, the direction of theta 1, theta 2, and I give it to you. The theta 1, let's say 32, 30 degree, theta 2, maybe 45 degree, theta 3, maybe 120 degree, everybody under wherever I put it doesn't matter. However, I can write this equation three times. Everybody understand that? Yes? For theta equal to theta 1, for theta equal to theta 2, for theta equal to theta 3, and I measure all that, which is on this side, it becomes three equations for because here it was one equation, one unknown, because I already had epsilon x and epsilon y. So routinely this becomes like that. So you write it like that, epsilon theta 1, which you measure, equal to epsilon x cosine square of theta 1 plus epsilon y sine square of theta 2 plus gamma xy sine theta cosine theta, theta 1 cosine theta. So you put theta 1 is given, so cosine become a number, you square it. So as you see, this is one equation for epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma. Then you write it again for theta 2. Theta 2 maybe 52 degree, I don't care, 60 degree. So you write epsilon theta 2 because you have measured that. Remember, A, B, C is measured from your experiment, so you write epsilon x cosine square of theta 2 plus epsilon y sine square of theta 2 plus gamma xy sine theta 2 cosine theta 2 and you write it one more time for epsilon theta 3 as you see it, it's become three equation for three unknown your three unknown is epsilon x epsilon y and gamma but usually that's not the case because most of the time you try to put your gauges along the x and why? As you will see in some of your examples. I mean, this is silly to put it out. Unless you don't have a way to do it or you want it to, in, to put it at one, uh, zero degree, end up to be at five degrees, so you want to adjust your not. So that's theta one. Is that correct or not? Yes? You had a question. Somebody had a question. Wait. Is it supposed to be sine theta two for the sine theta one equation? Sine theta. Oh, this one, all one. This one, all two. So thank you. This is all theta 1, theta 1, theta 1, theta 1. This is theta 2, theta 2. And then the last one is theta 3, theta 3. So three equations. I didn't have even to write it, but I wrote it. Then by that, then we can calculate everything. Now let's go to a couple of examples and see whether we can do. You need this. You need three gauges at any direction will do it. This is the bottom mm -hmm. line. And the last thing you want to connect, you have to connect your knowledge of this ME218 with the knowledge of a strain. There is nothing new there. Every, everybody should be able to do it. You, but the only problem that I've seen in the past is people are afraid of the strain, but they are not afraid as much of the stress. But they are both parallel. Remember that when you have the stress, you can find a 
strength. Now let's go through some example one by one. Strength number one is to go to the next page. You will see that problem. So you see that problem there. Maybe I should put that one down again. So okay. So down again. So here we go to the next problem. Where is it? What happened? Oh, it's not showing anymore. But that's okay. I pulled it out so I cannot show it anymore. Anyhow, you have it on your handout. Look at the, the three gauges there. I don't need the board with this one anymore. So look at the three gauges that it says, look at problem number one, quiz number six. Look at that. Do everybody see that? Yes, that's the one. Everybody should look at this problem with three gauges like that. It's three gauges like that. I do the essential part of it to show you how this works. Already you got the message. I'm sure that you know exactly what to do here. But let's say that three gauges are like that. It is given to you. Is that correct or not? Everybody see that? It says, on the surface of a structure or component in a space vehicle, the strains are monitoring. And we're monitoring the strain, informing this, this information to the computer to check it all the time. And we found out that epsilon A equal to what? 1100 micro. Yes or no? What is epsilon A? Epsilon A is? Epsilon A actually is epsilon X equal to 1100 micro. Yes or no? Correct or not? Yes? Are you looking at the homework? Are you looking at the quiz number six? Everybody? All right. So what's epsilon Y? So where's yours? 200. <laughs> Go get one. There is one on the table. There are a couple of more left on the table. Without that, you are not going to understand what I'm talking about. By writing this number down, guys, Zero. If I were you, I would not even understand a point of what we are about talking about. You see, this is not the way to, to handle this course. You have to have, I gave you many chances to have a copy of this one. Anyhow, epsilon A is epsilon X is 1100. Is the epsilon Y is given? Yes. Yes, epsilon Y equal to how much? 200. Epsilon Y is equal to 200 micro. We are looking for gamma XY, yes or no? Is not, not given. Instead, what is given? Epsilon in the direction of the C. This is the, what you see there. This gauge, this gauge, and this gauge. Is that correct? And this angle being 30 degrees. So this is A. And this is B, apparently. This is epsilon B. This is the B, and this is the C gauge. Is that correct or not? So, of course, I use that for X. That's why, as I said it earlier, I use that one for gamma. Yes or no? So, therefore, I write here. But I cannot use the equation of 45 degree rho Z because this is not a 45 degree. I have to use general equation. So, epsilon at this epsilon C, which is equal to how much? Epsilon C is given equal to this capital C. What's given equal to also 200 micro. Yes or no? Correct? So, 200 micro equal to epsilon x epsilon x look at the equation i erased the equation but i should have left it there epsilon x time epsilon is 1100 time cosine of 150 square yes or no yeah. now notice here here if you put 30 here cosine of 30 if it is negative positive does not make any difference because it's a square so no changes there so if you instead of 150 you put 30 no problem there. Everybody understand that, yes? Plus or minus become a square. Become the same thing for epsilon y. So epsilon y, which is 200, times sine of 150 squared. So let's write it down. Again, if this is a negative, become a square. However, if you make a mistake, there is a big difference in gamma. Because 130 and 150, sine of 30 and cosine 30, both are positive. But sine of 150 is positive, cosine is negative. Everybody understand what I'm saying? That therefore, if you make a mistake there, you are totally doing a wrong problem. Is that correct or not? Therefore, definitely will be cosine of 150 degree and sine of 150 degree. And one of them will be negative. Is that correct or not? Yes? Correct? So that's what I'm referring to. I hope everybody understands that. This is 30 degrees. Sine is positive. Cosine is 
positive, 150 degree, which is this number. Sine is positive, but cosine is negative. Everybody understand that's automatic will come into the, your sine. Anyhow, so you must use this angle. So this is your theta. This is what I'm saying. That. So please be careful. Anyhow, because I have seen many mistakes. From here, you calculate gamma xy, and gamma xy become equal to 1,560 micro, which is plus. Then, depend what is being asked. This is the same problem I did last time, so I should not do it again. But briefly, I'm going to have to spend a few minutes because I have lots of other problems to discuss with you. So I'm going to briefly mention that. So let's say we are looking for principal strain and maximum shear strain. Is that correct or not? Principal, which are normal strain, and maximum shear strain, which is the gamma. Is that correct? I have to plot the more circle with the same sign convention we did before. So this becomes something like that. So I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to give you an answer. So epsilon average become equal to 650 micro. First of all, you divide this by two. So you go like that because you need gamma over two. Gamma over two is 1,560 divided by two. So that is 780 micro radians. So that is your gamma over two for your per. Then you plot it. You plot the circle, etc., etc. I can show that what happened there at the end. So this becomes your circle. So this is what is going to happen. So this become epsilon minimum, and this become epsilon maximum, and this will be epsilon. This will be gamma over two with that arrow. Remember that. And R become equal to any way you use the graphical method or equation, doesn't make any difference. This become 900 micro. And epsilon A or epsilon max become 1,550 micro. And epsilon B or epsilon minimum, these are principal one. Let's call, call it A and B small, because I don't want you to make it with this A and B, because this was gauges one, gauges B. This is principal, everybody understand. The two points that I'm showing here and there, which usually I show it at A and B, but that one become minus 200 micro. Now, what happened there is like that. You go here, you plot this point. Plotting that point is 1,100. You go here, 1,100. Then you go 780. You have to go 780 down here. So that will be your x. Then you go 200 here. You go 780. So that will be your y. Then you connect this together. That will be your c. This will be your r. This is 900 divided by 2. So this is 450. This is 450. And you calculate 450 and 1100, that gives you the R, et cetera, et cetera, which we have done it many times. Is that correct or not? So I should not go into that detail. Now you go that one. So we calculate that one. Now the last part I want to mention in one more time because I already, what is the in-plane gamma or in-plane maximum shear strain? is not the radius. Gamma over two is the radius. Is that correct or not? So please write it down. Gamma over two xy plane, which is this plane, which is related to x and y, is equal to the radius, correct. The radius was 900, 900 micro, and then gamma max in plane, xy in plane, become 1,800 micro, which is larger than what we started earlier, which was 1,560. Now, how do we calculate absolute? Look at it. I'm asking for absolute maximum shear strain. I mentioned that last time. Answer? Is it plain strain or plain stress, by the way? Don't forget about what I did here. Remember, I said plain stress is common. Plain strain object must be between two rigid. Is this surface that I put a gauge on it, is it between two rigid plate or is it open to the surface? Is that, so sigma z must be equal to? 
zero. So it was z must be equal to zero. Epsilon c must not be zero. Is that correct or not? Because you have the surface. Look at this is the surface of your car. You are putting a gauge here, your gauge here. The car is being pressed this way, pressed this way. Is that correct? Is this side getting larger or smaller? Obviously larger. This is a plane of stress. Is that correct? We use the idea to plot the Mohr circle, but our real problem always are plane of stress unless you put your object between two rigid body, which I told you last time with Oreo cookie. Is that correct or not? The soft material between the two harder material or relatively rigid body. Is that correct or not? We don't have that often unless you put a plastic material inside a concrete hole. Everybody at that try to push it, which doesn't have any room for expansion. Everybody understand in the Z direction, that sort of. Or you get a plate, soft material, rubbery material, put it between two pieces of metal. Is that relative to that metal? Metal can be considered rigid, so therefore there is no epsilon. You get push it this way, push it this way, it wants to go up. You don't let it go up. Epsilon is zero, but sigma z is not zero. But that's very not common. Is that correct? If I've seen the surface of the shuttle, there it must be plane stress. Is that correct or not? Plane stress means what? Means but sigma z equal to zero, but epsilon z is not equal to zero. Is that correct or not? Yes, what was epsilon z? I give it to you last time. Epsilon z was equal to, I calculated for you. You remember that? Yes? Negative, negative, negative That's right. I used the I said use the equations, all of everything. I already we discussed that. But I gave you also equation that epsilon c equal to epsilon z equal to minus nu, one minus nu time epsilon a I can put a b or x y or whatever because they are all constant. The sum is constant. Is that correct or not? Yes? So what would be epsilon c? Can you guess it? No. The sign of it. Can you guess it? What is epsilon max? Is it plus or minus? Plus. So it is large, lots of tension in this direction. What is epsilon minimum? It is. Is tension or compression? Compression. compression means you have an object that being stretched this way by sigma x. Is that correct? A lot. But in this way, it is compressed, but this is much little with compared because you have this one. This side is going to get smaller or larger. See, if this was not there and you are stretching it, this side becomes smaller. Is that correct or not? The effect of this is less than the effect of that. Is that correct or not? So in other words, epsilon z or epsilon c equal to minus nu sigma x over e minus nu sigma y over e. Is that correct or not? Sigma y x is tension, so you get huge negative. Sigma y is in compression, but it's a smaller quantity. Of course, minus time minus become plus, but does not overcome that. Is that correct? So I expect, when I see this, I expect my epsilon c to be a negative number. Is that understood? So everybody understand what that? However, if this was small tension, but this was large compression, this side will go to become larger. Is that correct or not? The, Z, the thickness becomes larger because I'm putting more pressure on it than more tension. Is that correct or not? Therefore, in that case, epsilon C would have been become. So you have some idea ahead of time what you expect. But let's see whether that happened here. So epsilon C equal to epsilon Z equal to minus 0.29. Did I give you point no, there? Or 0.3, did I give you 0.3? 35, oh, sorry. 0.35 for this problem. 1 minus 0.35, 1,550 minus, what did I put here? I think this is 250. What did I put? Yeah, this become maximum. Did I give you maximum or minimum? No, not yet. Yeah. This is 1,550. This one, 250. I have it here, I don't know. So that's 250, yes. So minus 250, so you put minus 250 here, so you do it together, it becomes minus 700 micro. So what I'm saying that if you are looking for absolute maximum, gamma will not be in the xy plane, which is this circle, will be in the x and z plane because your, this becomes minus 700. And then your second circle becomes like that, and your third circle becomes like that. We have done that. So you need the diameter of the larger circle, yes or no? Correct? 
It's the same thing we did for a, for a stress. So, but the point is epsilon c is not equal. Anytime your bumper of your car is the epsilon c equal to zero, you, know, you stretch it this way, you stretch it, it's going to change a little bit. Of course, you don't see it by eye. Everybody sees because these are all macro. 200 macro, what is that? 0. 0.0002, everybody, 402. That's not something you see. Yes? Can we find EZ without? What? Can we find EZ without nu? Without nu, no, you can't. I've, I've, see, the whole idea is the Poisson ratio. If the, 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 the relationship between epsilon z and epsilon x is also Poisson ratio, it means when you stretch something in one direction, that was one of those early questions. That was not a good question. That's what I'm saying. That. Look what you are asking me. What is Poisson ratio? No, because one of the homeworks, they didn't give you uh, nu. Oh, but they, I give you G and E, yes? Yeah. Then you have to use the formula to calculate that. Is that but without nu, the problem is not solvable. Because the po nu is the whole key here. If I stretch something in one direction, nu, part, nu percent of it goes to the, the whole Hooke's law that I, I repeated, I give it to you as a handout, is all depends on the value of Poisson ratio. ratio. However, if in a problem they were not given, which I'm going to do it in a minute, I saw there is a relationship between G and E and new. Is that what you are referring to? Yes. So your question is different. If the problem is not, you said, can I solve this problem without new? No, you cannot solve it without new. However, if G is given and E is given, there is a relationship like that. I was going to do it through another example. That's the relationship between G and E and nu. So you can get it from that equation. Because nu, again, is not measurable. G and E, you can measure it in the lab. G by the torsion, E by the tension. So you measure that. Some of you have taken lab. You know what I'm talking about. Yes or no? Correct? You put the lab. So question. For this problem, why do you, why do you say uh, epsilon C equal to epsilon Z? Because that's what, because no changes that. Because epsilon c and z are no, it is only rotation of x, y. But epsilon c is given here as 200 micro. <sighs> okay. This is reference to x, y, z axis. This is the gauge a, b, c. That's capital C. Those are a, b, c that, are, that I changed the capital to. Those have nothing to do with it. Okay. Yes? Yeah. Those are principles, the three principles. You see, this is x, y, z. Yeah become A, B, C, small A, B, C. Is that, has nothing to do with this one. This is the measurement. Is that, that's why I changed ex actually exactly what I did. I call it here epsilon A something. Yeah, epsilon max, epsilon minimum for that. This is X re reference to X, Y, Z axis there. All right, yeah, you, you know that, you remember it. Is, is that correct? One? Let's do some more examples now. Let's go to problem number six in your handout. Remember on the handout, this is now you have to be very careful about this type of problem. So exactly what you have to do depends on your knowledge of, again, back ME218. So go to handout. There are six problems there on the handout. And problem number six. So I wish I could get that one. Look, I took it out so it doesn't show. So let's see whether it's come back again. So if you're coming back again, yes, we can do it. Okay, so just while I'm taking it out, so, okay. It's week seven. All right, let's go back again. Look at this problem, this problem, we did that one, this problem we did already. That's the one we did, new West Point, we just talked about it. And these are your homework, we do that. Let's go to this problem. Problem number six. Oh, we can't have to do that. This is for on and down. Okay. It will come in a minute. You have it in your handout. I, I put this for the benefit of camera, but you, you all have it, guys, in your handout. So go to problem number six in your handout and take a look at problem, handout problem number six. Take a look, read the question, and can you answer that question? If that was your quiz today, can you answer that question? If yes, though, we are all, can go home all. All right. Come on, guys. 
The only thing I can recommend here to you is this guy. Although we are talking all about the strain and the strain relationship, but you should not look at it this way. You should go back to ME218, look at it as a state of stress. So everything depends. So everything we talk about it in this lecture, it depends on the state of stress first. Yes or no? Look, I started the lecture by saying that we may or may not have a sigma x. Yes or no? <coughs> Correct? Then we may or may not have a sigma y. And then we may or may not have a tau xy. I put it all positive. Yes or no? In all your homework problem, ME218, 219, you end up with this, which is a planar stress. Is that correct or not? Sigma z, of course, equal to zero. Yes or no? Yes? yes. All right. What is this? Of course, it's a planar stress. Is that correct or not? Now, here is the question. We have put a gauge there, gauge A and B. The gauge reading of gauge is equal to, it's given, 100 micro. Yes or no? So let's put it there. Gauge, this is the system. This is a force P, a torque T. And here at that point, I put here a gauge like that and a gauge like that. And that direction is how much? That This is X, this is Y, and that direction is... How many degrees? 40 degrees. Okay. Or 45. Whatever is there. I don't see it from here. Is that correct or not? Yes? Okay. The question is, if epsilon, this is again the reference what you just asked earlier, a little while ago, a couple of minutes ago. This is epsilon A and epsilon B. Epsilon A is measured after the loading. Before the loading, of course, there is no stress, no strain. After the loading, epsilon A is 100 micro. Epsilon B is minus 55 micro. New Poisson ratio is e given equal to 0.29 for this problem. 0.29. It is all there. Modulus of elasticity is 30 times 10 to the power of 6 psi or 30,000 ksi. That's the same thing. Is there. And the question is, what is P and what is T? Come on, guys. Now, did I give you the location of the gauge? Notice this is our gauge, two gauges actually, C, and I put it there. Is this important where I put my gauge? No, don't say no. You have to have an answer for it. See, all those who said no, they knew the answer, or you just said no because everybody says no. Which is the true? Which is the true no. case? No, because no. Why? You didn't put any. Why? You didn't put any links. Why? Okay. So can I put it anywhere? Uh, in this case, That's what I'm asking you. Yes. So why? Okay. You say yes. I guess I don't know. So that's the question. You see, by saying the no or yes, what's your reasoning? And that's exactly what I'm giving you a quiz for. The quiz I ask for all the reason. If you don't know reason why you are putting theta equal to zero here, then when it, I change A to B, you don't put it at B, then I, re I realize that you did not 100% are there that I want you to be. Is that correct or not? That's exactly my point. Yes. That not a good question. The, I mean, the answer is correct in a way, but that's not the way I'm looking at. This one goes back to basic. When you have lecture one, ME218, when you have a P here in this cross section, sigma is everywhere, yes or no? So does it make any difference whether it's on top or the bottom or on the side? No. Is that correct or not? That is P. However, for the torque, when we have the torque, here, what the shear stress was outside. Wasn't that outside equal to constant of tau, C, tau T C over J? So make a difference? No. no. However, if this was a beam, that's what some of your homework is. And I put here a load. Does it make difference where I put my gauge? Yes. Of course it makes a big difference now. You see, this is the answer I'm looking for. So you have to go to your background and check that here, normal stress is uniformly distributed in the cross section, including on the surface. Yes or no? It's going tension, all tension. Yes or no? Here, 
or here, or here, or here, or here is all the same. Except I don't want to put my gauges near the, the support because I'm afraid of a stress concentration. Remember stress concentration idea? So I'm trying to stay away from that. Is that correct? But it's a rod under tension, every sigma in every cross section. This is so making the story short, both the tau and the sigmas are all similar in all the cross section. That's the answer what I was looking for. However, if it become a beam, not even the distance x become important. This way, y also is important. Yes or no? M x changes the value of the m. Yes or no? Oh, this is m two eighteen. <laughs> the further I go, the more moment I have. So I have to know where I'm putting it. Yes or no? This way, sigma equal to what? Sigma equal to m y over. Uh, you know on the neutral axis the effect is zero as you go up it's tension or compression. One side is tension, one side is tension. compression. Is that correct or not? Vice versa. So the definition is where you put it here is totally depend on the state of stress at that point. Is that correct or not? Which will take us to some of your homework. I don't know whether you look at those homework or not. I'm going to explain it before I did. Here does not make any difference. Everybody agreed. Though the answer I heard is correct because it's uniformly distributed. Yes or no? Therefore, the location is not bad. Let's finish the problem. Then I get, go back to that one. Now, the first thing first, how does my state of stress look like that? Go back. This is the whole idea. This is interesting. If I give you the P and I give you the T and I give you the dimension, by the way, the diameter of this rod is one and a half inch which is written there. Everybody can calculate the state of a stress because this is very elementary for you. Of their uh, normal stress, the P over A and TC over J, yes or no? So therefore, in every point here or there or there, including point C, you have a normal stress, sigma, equal to P over A because it is in tension, yes or no? Correct? So sigma X equal to P over A and then tau, which the way it looks like, because it's going this way, so the tau will be like that. We have gone through that. This is very basic. The tau, which is tau xy, equal to tc over j. I have to give it minus because this is going downward. Is that correct or not? Yes? Correct? Yes. This will be the state of stress, correct? OK. Now, is this going to create epsilon x? Now, the key, as you saw in the graph is the Hooke's law. What's the Hooke's law? You see, I have to use more board here. The Hooke's law is the following. This is gen in general. Here is particular to that problem. So I'm going to erase that. And then epsilon x equal to what, guys? Sigma x over e minus nu what? There is no sigma z. Is that correct or not? Do we have a sigma y here? No. So therefore, this become equal. This cannot be any more elementary than that. Everybody understand what I'm saying? That the relationship between a stress and a strain is, as I showed you in that graph earlier, I can go back again, look at it everywhere. It was everywhere. I go back. It's worth looking at that one more time. Look at it. Hooke's law. Hooke's law. Hooke's law. Anytime I have Hooke's law, I can go from a stress to Strain, you have seen it many times in there, or vice versa. Is that correct or not? That is the idea I'm asking you to use in this set of homework, which is very simple. Now, if you look at it carefully, it becomes very simple. However, you have to remind yourself, anytime I have sigma, I can put it in the Hooke's law to come to the epsilon, or I have epsilon, I put it to Hooke's law to get to the sigma. That's as simple as that. They are parallel to each other. Is that correct or not? Nevertheless, we go there, so therefore, now, Sigma x also equal to, in this problem, only p over a. I'm looking for p, so if I give, I have sigma, I can solve it. But sigma equal to e time epsilon, because there is no sigma y, there is no sigma z. Is that correct or not? Therefore, sigma x equal to epsilon x time modulus of elasticity. Epsilon x was given equal to 100 times 10 to the power of minus 6 multiplied by 30 times 10 to the power of 6 PSI. So that this and this drops out. So it becomes 3,000 PSI. So the sigma x is 
3,000 psi. There is, doesn't take a genius. This is lecture 1, ME 218, to calculate the value of P. P. Is that correct or not? So therefore, you calculate the P equal to sigma times the area, and sigma is 3,000 psi, and the area is pi times pi times radius square, which is 0.75 square. You can calculate that one because the diameter was given. This is a circular shaft, and you calculate the P to be equal to 5,299 of 5,300 pound. So for 5,300 pound loading here, epsilon A will be reading that 100 micro. Is that correct or not? Yes? You could have done by, I could put the load here. You could calculate epsilon in reverse. Yes or no? No. The next question is, what is the value of torque? Again, what's the torque? Look at this, guys. Torque is related to tau is equal to Tc over J. Yes or no? But what is tau? What do I need there? What is the relationship between stress and strain, shear strain? This is shear stress and shear strain. Gamma. Gamma was equal to, I wrote it a few minutes ago. Gamma xy was equal to what? Tau over modulus of rigidity. Tau xy divided by, uh, the only question is, that's why probably you were asking here. Here I have given you new and modulus of elasticity, but I did not give you the modulus of rigidity, which I was going to bring it here, you asked earlier. Is that correct or not? Therefore, g equal to what? First, let's calculate the g. Based on these two, g become equal to e, again, divided to 1 plus nu. So I give you that 11.6 times 10 to the power of 6 psi. So if I have the g, if I have the gamma, I have the G like the other one. I can calculate the tau. If I have the tau, I can calculate the T by loading. Reverse order. Is that correct? Everything is in reverse order. It's nothing new. You all know the answer. Is that correct or not? Yes? But in, instead of going forward, we are going sort of backward. Everybody understand that? We are having the testing, and we want to see what kind of loading cause this kind of gauges is that kind. Even if it breaks, we want some time to do that. What kind of forces cause this kind of damage to the structure, which by itself is another art. Is that correct or not? Yes? Mm -hmm. All right. Anyhow, so what should we do now? Okay. Now, what should I do? You see, here I had epsilon x. So what do I need? Look at the problem. I need the gamma. Well, gamma is not measurable. Instead of that, what do I have? I have that epsilon at, at 45 degrees. Didn't I ask you to, what to do to get that? Yes or no? It again in reverse. So you can use the equation that I gave you, epsilon of 45 degree equal to, you can use that equation, or oh, I'm sorry, gamma xy equal to 2 epsilon or 45 degree minus epsilon x plus epsilon y. I just gave you a, a while ago. Yes or no? Yes? Correct? All right, so let's use it, that one. Become two times, what's epsilon 45 degree? Epsilon 45 degree is? It, well, we read it because it's in the text. Yes, it's there. It is negative 55. So it is minus 55 minus epsilon x. Epsilon x is? Epsilon a is? 100 plus what? Epsilon y. What's epsilon y? <laughs> you see, that's the mistake, common mistake. Look how many of you immediately you said epsilon y zero. Because I didn't measure it, you all assume epsilon y is zero. Yes or no? Right? And you know, again, that's, the, that's what I was referring earlier. That is the Poisson ratio. Yes or no? <laughs> if there is an epsilon x, new person goes to epsilon I don't need to do measurement because I only have two unknown. If I had another in unknown, then I needed three measurements. Everybody understand what I'm saying that. However, yes, write it down. According to the formula, epsilon y equal to minus nu sigma x over e 
plus sigma y over e minus the other one, the other one zero. Sigma y you all just said, so it actually become very standard minus nu time epsilon x, which is really the definition of the Poisson ratio. Whatever you are pro producing in what direction, nu percent goes to the other one. Is that correct or not? Yes? So therefore, if epsilon x was 100, then epsilon y become equal to minus 0 0.29 times 100. So it is minus 29. So do not jump to the conclusion. This is always true. It is not measured, but it is there. I can calculate that. Is that correct or not? I did not measure because I could calculate. One measurement was enough. Actually, if you measure it, it should be showing negative 29. Is that correct or not? If all the instrument is correct. Therefore, you put here minus 29, not 0, and you calculate gamma xy, and gamma xy become equal to, gamma xy become equal to, somewhere here, one, one, minus 180 times 10 to the power of minus 6, or you can write it in micro, micro radian. You don't have to put it. So minus eight, 181. As soon as you have the gamma, it is needless to say, you immediately can calculate tau xy. So you calculate tau xy. Tau xy equal to g times gamma. g was 11.6 times 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by minus 181 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Notice again, if you apply this 6 business that I always ask you to use, tau become minus 2100 PSI. And it become minus, notice it, T is positive, but tau is negative. And that's the answer came by, yourself, by itself. So because the measurement was like that. Yes? What is the units for the gamma right there? Gamma, gamma it hasn't, doesn't have a unit because it's micro-radian. But in radian, but it is unitless. It is inch over each millimeter, but, but it's radian. Yes. All right. The same thing with epsilon. Epsilon doesn't have any. It is inch over inch, millimeter over millimeter. It's the ratio that we need. Anyhow, so therefore, no, don't go away. I have the most important problem yet there. Yet, yet there. Still we have that. Did you see how this problem solved? Okay, then we take, that takes us to the next problem, which is this problem. So you have homework like that in the book or homework like that. Again, I mentioned that for your beam. If there is a beam here, there is a load here, where you put your gauges is very important. Is that correct or not? Mm -hmm. So you have to go to a state of a stress, find what we did earlier. You see, you had homework like that, you missed it, some of you. You had homework like that. I thought in this class I gave a problem like that. There was a P here. Is that correct or not? Yes? Yes? Now you're getting similar problem. That part of it is not a question. That part of it is you already know. You have a homework like this. I'm going to mention to you because I don't have you. There is here a force P and there is here a force Q. Is that correct or not? And then you measure something here, somewhere here. You measure your strain and then you want to calculate the value of P and Q, which is exactly this problem a little bit different because that one now you, it is bending involved, as you said. Okay? Now look what happened here. If you cannot do that problem, Certainly, you cannot this problem. That's why I gave you earlier those homework in order you for at least through the quiz to learn it. Is that correct or not? Now, what you have to do here, you have to draw the free body diagram, either the upper part or the lower part. So I'm just, because you are out of time, I'm just saying that this one is P, yes or no? This one is Q. This is your N. This is your shear. Is that correct? You have a shear force in this cross section. You have a normal force in this cross section. Also, you have, depend on this L, PL, you also have a moment. So you put your gauge here or here or here or here. That was a big difference. Depends where you are. Is that correct? But you have to be able to come up with your state of stress. That, that defines your strain. But if you have done it in the past, it should not be a problem. But if you haven't done it in the past or you couldn't do it in the past, you have a problem with the static, which many of you did. Remember in this class especially, yes, 
you could not even bring those forces down here, which is very simple, as you, by now everybody knows that. However, I don't know what, which homework they give you, they, whether they put it here or so here. I just, if you are here, that's sigma equal to Q over area minus Q over area minus, this is PL, everybody under, minus M, Y over I, etc. So what I'm saying that you may have a sigma Y in the form of compression. Or if you are on this side, compression, compression. If you are in this side, compression and tension. So it, let's go to this side. So you have definitely compression minus Q over A minus MY over I because we are not at the end. We are not here. We are somewhere near the centroid of the section depend on the center. And then you also have a shear stress like that. That shear stress this time is not TC over J. It is VQ over IT, et cetera, et cetera. But if you quite frankly look at it, this is exactly what you see there. Everybody understand that this is one stress and one shear, one normal stress and one shear stress. That's also is one normal stress and shear. But instead of X, it is why? And then the rest is the same. The static of the problem changed. The strength part of it changed. Let's get, give me five more minutes because I did this for the other class. I need to mention it because this is very interesting problem. Sorry, I have to go somewhere too, but I take five minutes of your time because this is interesting problem. Go to problem number three. So go to problem number, sorry that I have to, it is here. I put it here on the board too. I hope it is still there. So go to problem number three, give me another five minutes. If you want to leave, you have something to do, but I suggest you stay because this is a very interesting problem. It's a simple problem, but at the same time, it's a very interesting problem because there are a bunch of problems coming like that because this is a pressurized tank, yes or no? Correct? Let's go quickly there. First of all, if it is a pressurized tank, what is sigma one? Remember the two sigma we had, sigma for per sphere, sigma one was equal to sigma two. One was longitudinal, the other one was uh, the, uh, over the uh, circumference of that, but this is a sphere, this is not a cylinder. In this one, x and y doesn't matter whether this is x and y or this is x and y. They put it anywhere you want to. Is that correct or not? Because it's a spherical share, doesn't matter. But this was equal to pressure inside, R inside divided by 2T, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Correct? Now knowing that, which is from the beginning of the, uh, the class, now that's the pressurized tank, and we put here, it didn't put a gauge, we put a line here 20 millimeter long, uh, originally was 20 millimeter. After we loaded, that increased by how much? That increased by 0. 0.012 millimeter increase that's plus so that's what we did and the outside diameter is the yeah, inside diameter i'm sorry the r inside is equal to 1000 millimeter the thickness of the tank is 10 millimeter so the ratio is more than 10 the ratio is 100 so i can use the thin uh, wall theory, which I have, that's why I'm using there. Is that correct? Remember, the ratio should have been larger than 10. The ratio is 100. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yes? So that works. You don't have to worry about it. So all of this is changing. Now, the question is, what's the value of the pressure inside? So I put this gauge. There is a pressure inside. I don't know what. This gauge, tell me, what's the pressure inside? And don't you want to know every time you are in the, let's say, living in Torrance near the refinery, what is the pressure inside the tank all the time monitoring it? Yes, so because the pressure can go up and down. What you see is through the strain gauges. Yes, yes, that's what I said. This problem is interesting. You don't have to put the strain gauge inside. You can put it outside. Yes or no? Yes. yes? The question is, if I have a reading of what did we did said that, we have what? There is something there. It says what? So let's read the Oh, that's it. This become like that. Is that correct or not? Again, let's go quickly. So epsilon must be equal to delta over L. That's the definition of epsilon. Yes or no, right? The delta is how much this time? The delta is 0 0.012 millimeter. Original length was 20 millimeter. So you divide by that time. That becomes 600 times 10 to the power of 6 or 600 micro 
plus. Why? Because it's increasing, not this. Of course, everybody knows the tank is going to expand. Yes or no? The location, not important, as I said, because X and Y doesn't matter here. Yes or no? I can put it anyway. So this is what we did. So here is your X. So this is the gauge, epsilon X. This is A, and that's epsilon A, which is epsilon X. Is that correct or not? Yes? Now, what's the state of stress? Again, I said everything depends on the... Now, please, when you go to this homework, start from the state of... So although we are talking about the strain, but you should think of a stress because that makes it simple life for you. What's the stress like on top of this tank? Sigma 1 and, and both of them are equal. So that's the state of stress. This is the key to the problem, guys. Sigma 1, going this way or the other way, it doesn't matter because this is a sphere. And sigma 2, and both of them are equal to each other. Yes or no? Correct? Therefore, what's epsilon x equal to? Epsilon x equal to what? Sigma x over e, yes? Minus nu sigma y over e, yes or no? But sigma x equal to sigma, sigma 2 equal to sigma, the same sigma, yes or no, right? And that is, let's put it th that way, let's go to that equation, look like what we get. That is equal to P times Ri. Ri is, well, how much? 1,000 divided by 2 times 10 millimeter, because the thickness is 10 millimeter. So it becomes 50P. So all I'm saying that sigma 1 equal to sigma 2, this is 50P, this is 50P. So all you have to do, E is given, nu is given, nu is given, nu is not given or is given. I don't know which was the nu. Nu was given. <laughs> yeah, point 0.3. So this was given. Sorry to keep you here. Point 0.3 is given. So you put it here, everything. So epsilon x is equal to epsilon x. We measure it. 600 times 10 to the power of minus 6 equal to 50p time y not minus nu divided by e, because sigma x is equal to sigma y. That's what I did. Nu is given, e is given, you calculate the p. Is that correct or not? Yes? The p become equal to, please write it down, the p become 3.43 mega pascal. After you calculate the p equal to pascal, you can calculate sigma 1 equal to sigma 2 equal to 50 times 3.43 mega pascal become 171 Mega Pascal. So that's the stresses there. It's all simple, very thing that. Now, what is interesting that I kept you here, let's draw the circle for the stress and for strain. So you see something that you haven't seen it in the past. Okay, this is for a stress guy. For a stress, this is sigma versus tau with the arrow. Is this sigma x or is this principal? Is this principal or not? These are principal because there is no shear stress. Yes or no? So this one is how much? 171. Yes or no? The other one is how much? 171. Have you seen a circle with zero radius? That is your first circle. Because sigma 1 is equal to? Sigma 2. So in your in plane shear is zero. Is that correct? Because your circle is zero. Now what's out of plane shear? The out operation, what's the sigma z? Is there a sigma z anything going this way? No. no. So sigma z equal to? This is, in other words, sigma max, sigma minimum. Both of them are 171. This way and that way. Both principal. Yes or no? Nothing. You have seen it, not before. But sigma z equal to zero because there is no sigma like that. So this is your tau max. X and Z, or Y and Z, doesn't matter, both of them applies, equal one half of sigma, equal to one half of 171. Now let's go to a strain. Epsilon versus gamma over 2. I want you to see both of them. The epsilon, what was epsilon equal to? The epsilon X was equal to 600, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes? 600 micro. What is epsilon y? Doesn't make any difference, except the same thing. Epsilon y also is 600 micro. micro. So both of them here, 
600 and 600. What is epsilon z? Is epsilon z zero? No, that equation I gave you. Remember that epsilon c equal because epsilon c this, this the thickness of cha tank changes. Yes or no? Actually, there was one homework I asked you to calculate the change in the thickness of that. And that one, epsilon c equal to minus nu, one minus nu, epsilon a plus epsilon b. And since both of them are positive, that one should be negative. And you do that, and you draw that last circuit, and that is your maximum gamma. So that will be it. So 